Hello and welcome to lesson 17.3 in the Alice tutorial series. Today we're going to be spending our time making a uh, stopwatch game. And it should actually be a pretty fun game. But it's going to build on what we talked about in lesson 17.1 and 17.2. Uh, recently we just introduced the While the World is Running event and used it to create a, a real-time clock, or even if it wasn't a real-time clock, a, a clock in general allowing Alice to keep track of how much time has passed. But one of the things that we want to learn how to control is how to tell Alice when we want time kept and when we want time to, you know, kind of be frozen. And the stopwatch game is a really good way to you know, run that example. You know, as we talked in the previous lesson, sometimes you're making a game and you want it to pause. At the very least, if a pause menu is called up, you're going to want time to stop counting, or maybe while conversations are occurring, or while the user's in a shop. I mean, there's a number of reasons to have the game stop keeping track of time, and we're going to do this by creating a game where the user is trying to stop a stopwatch in a given amount of time. So let's go ahead and get started with lesson 17.3, the stopwatch game. So here we are in a brand new Alice world, and the first thing we'll want to do is just set up some uh, some different objects for our game. We want to add a hand from the people gallery as, long, as well as a button. So go ahead and click on add objects, and let's scroll on over to people. And in people, there is the left arm. So we want to drag a left arm into the world here. And I'm going to position it so that it's sort of away from me. But I also want it uh, angled you know, up as if it's going to slap the ground. So let's have it angled sort of eh, like that would be good right there. And then push it to the side so that it's uh, a little bit off the screen. So something like this is what we're going for. So that you have the hand and eventually what we're going to do is move it down and put a button underneath it so that the hand can hit the button and that's going to simulate our stopwatch. So of course we also need the button, and to get the button we'll just go into controls here, and I'm going to use this generic button, and we'll probably have to adjust the size a little bit, but before that let's, uh, let's go ahead and have it turn to face the camera, so button, turn to face, camera, and then let's go ahead and rotate it backwards by 90 degrees, so button, turn, backwards a quarter revolution so that it's along the ground and now we'll just need to resize it so that it's uh, in proper proportion to the hand. So ideally what's going to happen here, and we might even want it a little bit bigger, is when the user presses a button we're going to have the hand uh, kind of slap down against the ground and we want it to line up with this button right here. So let's uh, run some test code right here. Let's make this window just a little bit bigger. I'm just going to have the uh, hand kind of slap down to make sure that these are positioned correctly. And I could also do this through quad view by just doing add objects, quad view, and then making sure that the button is directly underneath the hand. So that looks uh, probably about right. And then we'll just put in a command for the hand, left arm, turn, and it's probably forwards, though I could be wrong, so let's have it turn forward, maybe 0.15 revolutions, hit play, and 0.15 might be a little bit much, and the button needs to slide out just a little bit, so let's change this to 0 0.10, whoops, not 10, but 0 0.10 revolutions, and that looks about right, so the objects are positioned correctly, and we'll, we'll fine-tune those and tweak them a little bit, but that looks about right. So I can delete this code because we'll be recreating it into our own user-defined method. So this is going to be the setup for the world right here. Since the left hand is the one taking the object, I'm going to go ahead and click on the left arm here, create a new method, and we're going to call this method pr press button. So this is going to be the event handler for when the user decides to press the button. There's going to be a lot going in to this particular method, but we'll build it as we go. So the first thing we want to do, just like we tested there in my first method, is have the left arm turn forward 
by 0.1 revolution. So left arm, turn, forward, 0.1 revolutions. And it was a little bit slow. So let's go ahead and change the duration to, we'll call it 0.3 seconds and see if that looks a little bit faster. We're also going to need the event to test our press button method. Now you should remember this from the previous lessons, but go to create new event and we're going to use when a key is typed. The key that I want to activate the button press is the space bar. So when space is typed, we want to run left arm press button. So every time we press space, the left arm is going to press the button. Let's test this and make sure that it's working correctly. So we've got our world here, we hit space, and there you can see the hand slapping down. Now what I would like to happen is I would like the button to kind of depress a little bit as well so that it's just a little bit more realistic. And so the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to add a do together statement to button press. And I'm going to have the left arm move forward. Now this should be you know pretty standard right here and it shouldn't make any changes. If we hit play and hit space, the same thing's happening. But what I want is a do in order statement here. I know that this hand animation takes 0.3 seconds, but the button isn't being pressed until the end of the animation. So in this do in order statement, I'm going to add a wait 0.2 seconds, and then finally I'm going to have the button to press. To do this, select the button. We're going to have the button move backwards. And the best distance for this is really slight, about 0.05 meters is good for the button to be depressed, and we're going to have this occur over a duration of 0.1 seconds. So this do together statement right here all executes in 0.3 seconds. Now the hand is moving over 0.3 seconds, but the button isn't going to start depressing until 0.2 seconds have passed. So let's hit play and see what this looks like and watch the button, because that's really the change that we made. We hit space, and I, I have a slight bug in my program. I don't want the entire button to move, I just want the button that's part of the button object to move. So that was kind of a mistake right there, but let's retest this and make sure that this works correctly and watch the button. We can see that the button depresses a little bit. And we might even want to move the object over just slightly to about there. Test it out again. And that looks okay. Maybe we want the hand to rotate forward just a little bit more. So let's have the uh, left hand turn forward and do 0.12 revolutions and see if that looks a little bit better. I mean, th and this is a lot of programming right here, just kind of tweaking the little animations to make them look as realistic as possible. And that's probably okay. We're going to back it off to 0.11 revolutions. And your numbers may be different depending on how you position your object. So you just kind of have to play around with this and see. So that looks pretty good right there. I might want to back that off a little bit so we don't get this clipping and the hand is going through the ground, but this looks good for what we're going to be doing in this program. Next, I'm going to want to back out of this animation and sort of reset it. So once the hand hits the button, I want it to wait for a second and then reset back to uh, the starting position. So to do this, we'll just add a wait command of one second so the hand will stay depressed for one second. And then we'll back out of this animation just by doing everything in reverse order. So in a do together statement, let's go ahead and make a copy of the left arm turning forward. And we're simply going to have it turn backwards. We're also going to make a copy of this do together statement. Or, uh, excuse me, do in order statement. And this one gets a little bit tricky, but it, it's not too bad. We definitely want the button to move forward by 0.05 meters, but we want the move command to happen immediately. When the hand is coming down, it takes it 0.2 seconds to get to the button, but when the hand is leaving the button, it's leaving the button immediately. So I'm just going to switch the order of my move and my wait command. Now for all intents and purposes, you could get rid of this wait command, but it does help me to visualize that this entire animation takes 0.3 seconds, so I'm going to leave it in there. 
So this should reset our hand after we hit space. Let's go ahead and hit play and see how this animation looks now. So we hit space, the button is pressed, we wait a second, and then the button is reset. We're in a pretty good spot right here. We have the button press method written, and so this is a good starting spot for our stopwatch game. The idea of this stopwatch game is to have the program randomly select a time. And I haven't decided yet whether we're going to use tenths of a second or seconds or what denomination it is. It might be none of those. But what we want to do is have a random target generated, maybe between, say, 5 and 20 seconds, so that the game is different each time. To simulate this, I'm going to build a world-level method called randomize target. This is going to generate a random target number every time that the program is run. So let's go into world, create a new method, and we're going to call this randomize target. This way, every time the user plays the game, they're getting a, a different target time. Of course, whenever I want my program to store information, I need to store it in a variable. So I'm going to create a world variable. This is going to be called target time. It's going to be a numeric variable, and we're going to set it at a value of zero. Now, it's not going to be zero for long because it's going to be randomized to some, you know, magic number, whatever denomination we decide to use. So this randomized target is going to set the target time. We'll use one as a placeholder right now, but we're going to set it to a random number. So let's go function in world, scroll down to random number, and if you recall from the last lesson, this is going to give us a random number between 0 and 1 that's a decimal. Now I don't want that, so we're going to create a number right now between 10 and 50, and I might change these in the future depending on how the game evolves as we write it, but I also want to make sure that integer only is selected. When my first method is run, I want the world to randomize this target time, so in my first method, we're going to make a call to our randomize target method. To make sure this is working, I'm going to right click on target time and watch this variable. So right click, watch this variable, and let's hit play. I can see that I got a num the number 36, which is between 10 and 50 and is an integer. And every time I hit restart, I should be getting a new number. So my, my randomized target function, even though it's only one line of code, is working correctly. Now, it is a good idea to put this kind of stuff in your own methods instead of programming it directly into my first method here, because it will give you some flexibility later if you want to do more with this uh, random method. If you want to create a second random number, or if you want to add some display stuff, it's a good idea to have everything in methods and nothing coded directly into my first method at this point. So as you can tell, we're certainly not close to finishing our stopwatch program yet, but this video is starting to get a little bit lengthy, so we're going to call this part one of the stopwatch game, and we'll continue building it in the next lesson. But uh, hopefully at this point right here, you should have a world that has two objects, a left arm and a button. The left arm should be able to press the button by pressing the space key, so link the space bar pressed event to your button press event handler, and that way the user can press space to hit the button, even though the button doesn't have any kind of uh, programming to it yet, it's simply an animation at this point. We'll definitely do that in the next video. We're also randomizing the target time variable. The program isn't using that variable yet, but we are still randomizing it to a number between 1 and 50. We're going to have to build a user interface so that our gamers know what's going on in this program, and that'll be the focus of the next video, um, creating a user interface. And then we're going to create a function that counts time, similar to what you saw in the previous videos, and build a game out of the shell that we have right here. So thank you so much for your support of the Alice tutorial series. As always, if you have any questions or something wasn't working for you like it was in the video, leave those questions in the comments and I'll certainly help you out any way that I can. But I look forward to seeing everyone back for the second part of the stopwatch game program. 
Thanks for watching and have a great day.